Hey everyone, this podcast is part of Story Mode, the podcast network of gamefully unemployed. You can support us and gain access to other great exclusive podcasts at patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. Oh. Denzel! Oh, it's Denzel! Denzel! Oh, man. Everybody! Everybody, it's Denzel. Everybody, look! <laughs> hey, everybody. Hello, everyone. My name is David Bell. My name is Tom Ryman. And we just watched Denzel! Denzel! In, <laughs> in the little things. The little things. Starring Denzel! Starring Denzel! You're not exactly a department favorite. Things probably changed a lot since you left. You still got to catch him, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not that much has changed then, right? <laughs> I can assure you all we are taking a 24-7 all-hands-on-deck approach to these cases. The guy's a shark. If he stops, he dies. He likes to drive. Probably has a decent car, maybe two. High mileage. Yeah, you must really like my car. I do. How's the trunk space? Yeah, so this is a uh, this is like the only thing that came out this weekend. Uh, mm -hmm. It came out on HBO Max. It's the first uh, big. It's the first theatrical movie of this year that uh, HBO is it, it, the Warner Brothers is putting on HBO. Got it. And that, which is funny because this is kind of it feels like a streaming movie. Uh, I mean, a lot of movies do now. Like that's going to be an everlasting yeah, consequence of the past year. Is that I'm going to forever look at movies differently where like yeah I can't, some like i can't imagine having gone to see wonder woman 1984 well that does feel like a theater movie um, i can't imagine having to pay for that and then sitting down and seeing that but like uh i i mean like this is like a thriller well, and, a and 90s like, thriller and like soul like soul felt like well i could have just i could have just watched this at home like there's a lot right. of movies where it's the mystique of needing a theatrical release has been yes. er eroded a great deal for me yeah 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 i don't think it's the movie's fault i think it's just yeah. our standards because mm -hmm. now we're in a world where we're like well this is an option now so like unless it's like a big fucking a uh, wild you know unless it's like i don't know mortal Kombat. Mm -hmm. you know i want i wish i could see mortal Kombat in theaters maybe it's coming out in april we'll see what happens oh no i'm not see yeah i doubt i'm seeing it in theaters uh i'm just saying you know uh that like unless it's unless it's your mortal combats uh I, I really that's it mm -hmm. just it's mortal Kombat, then a big line and then every other movie under that um then yeah i don't i don't like soul is a good example is like i remember these being theatrical movies yeah but uh you bring kids to the theaters to see soul as an adult whenever we had to review a kid's movie mm -hmm. and i'd have to go to the theater it was miserable uh, yeah, I didn't. Because, I didn't love sitting by myself in Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, exactly. And then th those movies, it's like, yeah, I could really use the comfort of my home and like getting up and like you know, if I have to take a leak, I can pause it and and or if I need a snack. So yeah, this is that kind of movie to me. Uh, this wasn't an event, especially so. I mean, it's a police thriller. Yeah, it's kind of the yeah. It's this is a movie like Denzel's been kind of king of this kind of movie for the past yeah. several years, where it's like a, a January February release. Uh, it's clearly marketed at adults. Uh, yeah, they're like like this, like The Equalizer Two. Yep, there's I mean like mid budget movies that they're mid budget R rated movies that are coming out the beginning of the year. They're squarely aimed at people like thirty and up. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I. That's one of the things. One of my notes is I could watch twenty of these. Uh, I, I'm gonna go ahead and say spoilers because this is a twisty film. A little, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know, if you're intending on seeing it, it definitely is trying to lead you places. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom, what did you think of this movie? Um, I actually liked it. Uh, which is which is not the popular opinion. It has like a forty percent on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you this, Tom. I also liked it, mm -hmm. despite it being stupid. Yeah, I think it's a stupid movie. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, mainly because I think that they don't earn the the they quote don't. unquote twist. They don't. Yeah, that more more work needed to be done there. Yeah, uh, but good casting on Jared Leto. 
because the moment you see his name in the credits, you're like, oh, he did it. <laughs> uh, and well, I mean, when he you saw him in the trailer. In the movie, well, yeah, it, you saw him like in the having not thought it. about the trailer because yeah. I was I was watching um, some of this with Hana, and it's just like, yeah, I mean, it's Jared Leto. Like he's not showing up in the movie either, so it's like it's like, oh, so he must you know he's the killer before he even shows up because he hasn't showed up. Uh, if yeah, that makes sense. and he sh- and he shows up doing a whole ass thing too. Yeah, he's walking. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. walking like Frankenstein. Yeah, he's he has, doing a thing. He has a he has a one of the funniest fake guts. Yep, because I would argue they decided this character should have a gut, which is fine. And like normally, Jared Leto is the kind of actor who would just ferociously gain weight for a movie like The yeah, Little you Things. Could t- you could tell this one there, he was just like, nah, I can't, guys. Well, yeah, well it's, it, <laughs> what makes it so jarring is his face is so gaunt. Yeah, he's got... But he has, seen, this, he has this belly, and it's like, no, that belly is fake. <laughs> I, well, I have seen that. I've seen people with that type of body. Not this, dr- but not this dramatic. Yeah, but it's also, we know Jared Leto, yeah, so it just looks like Jared just, Leto stuffed it, his shirt with a pillow. Right, it's very clearly like a pillow <laughs> yeah. it's in, his, in his shirt. Uh, yeah, so, also, you know who's doing a thing in this, I would argue? Denzel. I mean, he's being Denzel. No, well, his smile is weird. Yeah. I mean, he's I'm got saying, a dopey smile. I'm saying he's being Denzel and that he's acting. Oh, he's an actor, yes. Yeah. Now, here's the thing about Denzel. Uh, I remembered it from this movie. He's a terrific actor. Uh, yeah, obviously. Um, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Fences, terrific. But you know where he excels, I think, more than anything else? What's that? Casual conversation scenes. Uh, casual. Yeah. Just like when he's just being a human, little things he does with his hands, little smirks, uh, little ways of saying stuff. Yeah, the, he's just the way very he... good at seeming like a like a just a normal human being. Right, you know, like fences. He's playing kind of an outrageous character. Yeah, larger than life character. Yeah, and he's great at that. But where he really excels is roles like this. Yeah, he knows like the the way it's like he like he knows how to throw certain lines away. Uh, yeah, when, when you're like when you're and it's it he makes it seem. There's one interaction in particular when he first gets to the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department, and I can't remember the the exact line, but it really struck me as like, man, he just that's that's like a small line in, in a scene that's ultimately just kind of meaningless. It's just like casual right. interaction between people, but he nailed the way to just well, casually throw away that line and make it seem like this movie is about know. a guy coming back to a police station that he left in, I guess, disgrace because he had a heart attack. And he had a nervous breakdown. Uh, and uh, well, something he, else happened. <laughs> I, know, I know. I'm just saying that's what the movie. That's what yeah. the movie tells well, us. Well, we we know something happened. We know something because he's um, he is he is extremely disliked by all the yeah. older department people. Uh, he basically he bailed out of Los Angeles and moved up to Kern County in yeah. Bakersfield, which is where yeah, I used his, to live. His only friend is fucking Frank Sabatka. Yeah, uh, that is Frank Sabaka. <laughs> He's fucking Frank Sabaka from The Wire. From The Wire. He's all over this movie. He sure is. <laughs> um, but yeah, those casual conversations are actually wh- where I realized it. Because you're, sh- you're seeing like a, a level of hostility, but they're making small talk. Mm-hmm. It reminds me, uh, like, again, he's done uh, many roles like this, but I always go back to Inside Man because he does that. Inside Man, one of the aspects of that movie that I really enjoy is that the police are kind of by the book or like really casual about a very dramatic bank robbery. Like it's part of, I don't know, it's part of the weird little details of that film is they show the whole process and so it's kind of like business as usual in a lot of scenes, and Denzel is really good with that. Uh, so, like, I don't know. Uh, this this so this movie starts with like a kind of the opposite idea, which is it's a serial killer, and Denzel seems like really invested in it. And one of my notes was gonna be that that I'm sick of that trope, but we learn that that trope has a reason in this movie. Yeah, but like whenever they do movies where the 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 they're like, we have to catch it for these dead women. It's like, nah, you're a cop. You you do this all like, you know what I mean? Where it's like the idea that cops care this much feels like a thing movies made up to make us feel like cops care. Yeah. Does that make sense? Kind of. This is like that's kind of that's the lesson. This movie, man. 
This what? movie's not about good cops, though. It's to- spoilers. This is about uh, two bad cops. Yeah, but not bad guys. Yeah. Well, um, it's it, the movie. Is, well, first of all, the movie's about obsession, and what the movie's yeah. ultimate kind of message. It's and it's this is a dark movie, and it's a little cynical. Um, yeah, which is like you. The lesson of the movie is you can't is is you can't care. Like you can't care about. Yeah solving these cases on a personal level because it will ruin you yeah because um, there's very i mean there's very very rarely in real life uh, does a you know justice or the resolution to uh, a lot of these crimes is very rarely clear cut clean satisfying completely wrapped up it's always mm -hmm. it's always unsatisfying in some way Right. This movie deals with the fact that closure. It's funny. I, for for something else, I was doing. I'm reading a lot of like psychology and police papers on the concept of closure with victims, mm-hmm. and that's one of the things we kind of fuck up in in uh, law enforcement, which is that there's a there's sort of a uh, a a line of thinking of like we're not doing this for the victims ever. We should never feel like we're doing this for the victims because once you do that, then there's like weird expectations on how a case needs to be solved it's how capital punishment happens a lot is justified a lot with the idea of closure Mm -hmm. and that's kind of what this is about is like they need to punish someone uh yeah so badly that spoilers they probably punish the wrong person we don't know we don't know it's complete it's it's it is uh inconclusive (laughs) yeah the, this is, again, why they cast Jared Leto, because you look at Jared Leto in, like, real life, and you're like, I bet he's done some stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so then in this movie, it's like, that motherfucker did it. Well, and, and that's he's, ca- the and point he, of the movie. Yeah, he's behaving strangely. Yeah, he's a weirdo. He's a weirdo, yeah. He basically starts, uh, they, like, track him down through a very flimsy lead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then that, the he, one that like Denzel himself even says it's pro- this is a long shot it's it's probably nothing but it's like he works for an appliance repair company that was called to repair the refrigerator in the apartment of the latest victim. Yeah. And so he like Denzel starts like on his off time cuz the idea is Denzel's unofficially involved. Yeah. He just like showed up for another reason. They're like, "Hey, you want to get in on this?" And we haven't talked about old Remy yeah, old Remy. Uh, yeah, he's like the hotshot detective, mm-hmm. and he instantly can tell that Denzel is like he calls him Columbo, which I thought was perfect because Denzel's like kind of he's like country cop now. When he's very, uh, he's clearly sharp. That's uh, that's the other thing that Denzel's really good at. Well, I mean, he's yes. he's good at a lot of things, but another thing that really is a is a is a bedrock of a lot of his performances is that sort of Columbo. Yeah, thing of the best. It's 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 like a um, it's a cheerful menace. Yep, the best fucking examples inside man where they do the interrogation scenes. Yeah, and you can tell they're so frustrated, and they know that one of the people they're talking to absolutely did it, and they're not sure who. Yeah, and so he's so friendly, but like uh, so angry at the same time. And it's the idea is like the knowledge of like one of these fuckers I'm talking to absolutely did it, but the other ones didn't. So I have to be nice. Yeah. Uh, or the, or like, yeah, yeah, that's for sure. I'm talking more about like the specific Columbo thing where it's like he's like circling. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like this. It's also in like training day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's there's there's a lot of that energy in, in this movie. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. No, like Rami Malek is um, like denzel's character has a reputation like he's a they say at one point he was the detective with like the highest clearance rate in the department yeah so like he's welcoming denzel's help because like the first he has him tag along to a crime scene and within five minutes he spots something that nobody else sees it's that the guy set up a chair across the street to watch uh to just look at this woman's dead body right um yeah so it he, also as becomes I'm, clear yeah. yeah it starts almost like this i think this movie wanted to be like seven right a little because this movie the thing you have and i because, i kind of already i suspect okay i suspect a lot of the negative reviews or at least a portion of the negative reviews are 
from people who were expecting a murder mystery because well, that is okay. that's not really what this is i i called that early because it was again the moment you see jared leto it was like okay well you have like it's it's Imagine if Seven was Seven, but they told you Kevin Spacey was in the movie, uh, and so you'd be sitting there waiting for Kevin Spacey, and you'd know, like, well, the moment I see him, it's a phone booth where Kiefer Sutherland is the voice, and so it's like, well, if I don't see Kiefer, I know it's not the killer, uh, and so they do that with this movie where they're like, yeah, it's Jer- Jared Leto, and if you saw the trailer, the trailer, you'd know. The trailer is more clear that this movie is, yeah. is less about solve it's more about obsession but what it does it does seven in the sense that it starts as a murder mystery and then abruptly changes when the killer is just like hey you know uh it's that where they they hone in on jared leto faster than you think that's not the reason why i don't like this movie um i was gonna wait till we get to it uh unless you want to know why or sorry well, I, mean, I did say i like this movie it's why i think people didn't like this movie or why i think it's a dumb movie okay which is that uh remy malik's uh arc uh it's it's gibberish they don't the, they, him they, going they, to the desert with jared leto is the most gibberish plot point i've they, seen in a movie they do not do the work to show us that no. remy malik is obsessed and the problem with that is well the problem with that is is it's the point of the movie and it's like they don't they they do not i did not get the sense that he was obsessed until he gets into jared leto's car in the last 30 minutes yes i was like oh that's a dumb thing to do yeah what happens (laughs) in this movie is jared leto is they've learned that he's like confess to crimes he didn't do in the past he's a, um, it's he's a cat and mouse with denzel and jared leto yeah he's he's a weird creep he starts like he go, he they take him in for questioning and he's clearly like pissing them off he's like he's like he's fucking with them he's fucking with them like you know he has a joker tattoo uh you just know it <laughs> he's, he's literally the joker dave yeah yeah, I know. Um, it, and that it's, he has the Jared Leto Joker tattooed on him. Right, that and character. he's so like he's so off-putting and like and so and, hittable. Yeah, and so so clearly a murderer when they're interacting with him. That the, I think this this aspect of the movie well, is well done. Uh, is that he's so off-putting and creepy and weird when they're interacting with him. But if you think about what evidence they actually have that he's the killer, it's it's almost nothing. Yeah. Also, it is still ambiguous because I, I think we've all met creepy weirdos. Well, oh, that no, I'm. I yeah, I don't. <laughs> He's like a real creepy weirdo, and he could just be like a guy, right. Who's just like lonely and a weird, creepy weirdo. He's just a weird, creepy weirdo that yeah. likes this having this because he mentions at one point that he's a crime buff. Yeah. Uh, Denzel breaks into his house and sees that he has a police scanner. And a bunch yeah. of newspaper clippings about serial killing. So it's like it's clear he likes this stuff, and it doesn't make him a murderer. But like it, it, it's clear he likes this, and he's enjoying the attention he's getting as a possible yeah. suspect. Um, and it's, I mean, the whole point of the movie is that it's, it's they leave it completely in- inconclusive as to whether or not he was the murderer. We, yeah, we don't although know. they do know, there's a few things. He flat out says. I did, I've never killed anybody in my life at a certain point when it's like feels like the most truthful thing he says in the moment. Yeah. Uh, and the hair, the beret. Uh, the beret. Yeah. He, uh, Denzel, do, basically Denzel doesn't find anything in his apartment ultimately that leads him. Nope. That links him to the murders. No. Um, so like it's, it's right on the edge is the idea. Um, and yeah, so they're, they're like, well, they do a lot of... It really seems like he's the guy. It does, but they, like, we have... The movie opens with a cold open where this woman gets chased by the killer and escapes, and then she comes back yeah. midway through as a witness, but uh, her testimony gets blown away, so it's like, okay, well, that doesn't matter. Then That the- was well done, because she sees Jared Leto in the hallway in cuffs before doing the lineup, mm-hmm. and they realize that, and yep. they're like, well, she's... He can't. She saw him in handcuffs. Um, she kn- she knows he's the guy we want. Yes. Uh, and also he was he's he was weird when he walked, but she probably caught a vibe from him. Yeah. Um, 
and then there's there's they get a, a partial fingerprint that he has like 11 signifiers and they need 12 and Rami Malek's like really pissed. He's like, well, what's one signifier? And then right. the fingerprint tech points out. It's like, well, here, these have eight, eight of the 12 signifiers. It's only like three less than Jared Leto's. And these are my fingerprints. Right. So it's it, there's that piece of evidence that's undercut. Yeah. And then... They're, 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 it's, this is like... <laughs> They're they're brewing up a Netflix documentary right now, you know. Yeah, like that's what this is. It's like the true crime you hear about, mm -hmm. whereas then they do a documentary and it's like shit. This person might not have actually done it. It's that. Yeah, they don't. Ha they really don't. Ha and like the biggest, the most damning one, um, is that the mile marker. Not the I guess? not the mile marker. The mile marker could be explained by because he calls. Like Jared Leto basically does a cat and mouse thing with Denzel. He realizes Denzel is what this is actually kind of a good scene. Yeah, it is. Um, where Denzel's following him on the freeway and Jared Leto pulls over and Denzel drives past him and then pulls over, but then realizes that Leto has like taken an, uh, an off ramp and looped back around. So they kind of keep looping back, looping back around each other on yeah. opposite sides of a divided highway. Ultimately, ending up right next to this mile marker where one of the bodies was found and Denzel calls Rami Malek and he's like is that did that go out to the media he's like no no it only it only ever went over dispatch but we find later that Leto has a police scanner so he could have heard that oh you're right yeah he could have heard that uh, um the most damning thing is the car but the car that we see chase the woman in the beginning is not the green car that Leto is driving in the movie Right, they never. Yeah, the implication is he has two he has cars. he has multiple cars because he had one get but stolen. But we never see the other one. Yeah, well, he we know right. we know he, he has, has, like has a, one. They yeah, and then they're like, "Why didn't you report it stolen?" He's like, "I did." I did. And then later they're like, "Yeah, he did. We looked it up." We just didn't. The sergeant on duty didn't file it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in the end, yeah. there's there's just they nothing. have zero evidence against him. It's just he's behaving like a weirdo, and he's yeah. and he's fucking with them. Yep. And so like you can argue his fate, he kind of brings it on himself. Uh but a also a little I sort of like as this Also the movie doesn't do a good enough job well, with that. I think the movie would have would have been like an A plus had they spent more time with Rami Malek's character to f well, flesh out the idea that this the, yeah. this case is consuming him. They just don't do I, that. Well, it's not even that. Ironically, the problem with this movie is the little things. Uh, the broad idea of the movie is fine. Mm -hmm. It's it's the moment, and I was with the movie, so what happens is there's this moment where, so they're like trying to break into his house, they're doing all this shit, and then they're just staking him out. Denzel goes to get some coffee, uh, there's a call on the payphone because this takes place in the 90s, by the way. It doesn't really matter, but uh, I get why they did that. It's a better era for the serial killer stuff. It also simplifies the plot. Yeah. Uh, in general. Also, this script, and, this script was written in 1993. Really? Yeah. That's wild. Uh-huh. Um, oh, there's a whole... Well, so, I'll, I'll, I'll get into it in a second. There's a whole ass history okay. to this movie. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. So he... Uh, he, he and it turns out Jared Leto is calling the payphone, and he comes out and, and actually he's is just he? like, or, "Oh, you're or right. Is that he probably isn't. Who knows? It's unrelated." Like Rami Malek goes to answer the phone, and Jared Leto just happens to be walking up behind him and says, you're right. and says, "Boo!" We have no idea if he's the one that was calling. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Um, and so then uh, he's like, uh, the Rami Malek immediately points his gun at him. Well, yeah, and that was the moment. <laughs> well, well yeah. no, that was the moment that I was like, "This is weird." Uh, because he reacts, he overreacts more than, because the whole thing is he, yeah, he's sort of obsessed, but he's like the cool headed cop and Denzel, mm -hmm. they keep establishing Denzel is the one who flies off the handle. So when he does this, I was just like, Whoa, Jesus, he just said boo at you. Um, and so they're trying to show that he's on edge, but it felt unearned just right there. Um, look, granted, if it's Jared Leto I mean, looked like that and approached me in a dark alley and went, boo, I'd point my gun at well, him, but I'm not a cop. Yeah, that's, uh, that, it seemed extreme, but not, um, no, not, it, was, it, not, it, was, it didn't seem unrealistic to me because, yeah, sure. we know he's been staking him out, he's tired, um, and then this dude surprises him in a dark alley who is a murder suspect, a multiple yeah, yeah. murder suspect. <laughs> And so yeah, the, the, rea time, the again, reaction's they, extreme, but I didn't think it was unrealistic. Yeah, they just do more of the work, like when when they do the highway thing. Denzel takes his gun out, mm -hmm. uh, and so that almost sets up 
that idea, but they never. Remy, they need to do right. Like he goes to Denzel's hotel room and sees that he has all the all the case file photos uh, taped to the wall and at the foot of his bed. Like we needed a scene like that with Rami Malek. Yeah, where he starts doing. Where he starts doing that. Yeah, but even all right. But even without, even if they did the obsession, I still don't think it quite worked. Because so he then um, Jared Leto, he's like, where is her? Where's this? There's one missing jogger, Mm -hmm. which they do that scene really well. It's kind of over the top. Like this is a movie where being a woman alone is bad. Uh, If the scene starts with a woman alone, you're like, ah, shit. Uh, I mean, and (laughs) (laughs) yeah, yeah, yeah. I I mean. (laughs) How- I just mean in terms of tropes where it's like the moment they show a woman driving alone, it's like, oh no, she's going to die. Right, right, uh, right, right. So they have a scene, with the, uh, they did it well with the jogger with the other guy and he's like, you want me to jog the rest of the way? And she's like, it's four blocks. What could go wrong? And jogs away mm-hmm. and then the car turns and it's like, oh no. Um, so, so, uh, so they're looking for her specifically. She's the missing person. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, uh, so he's saying, where is she? And Jared Leto's like, I can take you to her. And Remy Malik just gets in his car with him. Mm-hmm. And that's weird. He debates it for a while, but yeah, the fact that yeah. he, the fact that he gets in the car is just like, they did not, that's the, that's the unrealistic moment for me. Like yeah, that's where if- they really, really needed to do the work to show that this case is making him lose his mind because that's the right. only way you'd get into that guy's car with him. And I, I can't stress this enough. It's kind of, it's, it's, they're basically doing a seven here, which is I can show you the body and then he ends up sort of having control, not as literal as seven, but it's the same beats. Um, but they have to avoid it being seven where there's like cops involved. So like, this is the problem is Remy Malik is also just a good he's they've established him as a pretty by the book cop. So like the moment Jared Lowe's like, I can take you there. You'd think he'd be like, okay, I'm going to call this in and arrest you because you've essentially confessed. Um, but all right. So he gets in his car, then he should at least drive. Right. Yeah. Make, uh, make him get in your car. <laughs> And yeah. tell you where to go. And wait for Denzel. or so He tries to say, like, I won't do it with Denzel, but it's like, I don't know, man. But all right. So they drive to the location. He says, this is the spot where I buried her. And he starts digging it up. And it's like, no, again, call. <laughs> like, you. all right, you have the location. Now you need to arrest this man and bring him in, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, like, you what would, are you doing? You would arrest him. You'd 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 bring a whole you'd bring a whole forensic team out there with like yeah. cadaver dogs and shit like you wouldn't start you wouldn't just start dig- like was- they don't they don't do the work like i would believe it if they had shown us that this character was on the ragged edge but they never do that yeah they never do that he's not obsessing he's, at that point he's fu- he's not he's, agent Mulder looking for his sister you right. know he's not like i just gotta know it's not that no he's just he's, a regular fucking cop at this point he is completely fine until he suddenly isn't yeah, and so he just seems like a dumbass. Yeah, uh, it's, and this it's is that a sort of thing, where thing to do. Whenever a movie has like a tragic ending brought on by just bad character writing, I just can't. I you don't know. know. Like I don't. I, I wouldn't call this a, a tragic ending. It's not. Well, it's not the ending of Seven. No, no, no. But it's trying to do the same thing, which is that then Jared Leto starts fucking uh, being a creep and talking about Remy Malek's uh, fucking family. And Remy hits him with the shovel once, and that does it. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. That's all it takes. Well, yeah, you're, it. You're, you're leaving out the most important thing, which is, I like you said earlier that Jared Leto kind of asked for it. And I agree with that to a certain extent, but also I have to, like, if I was a dude, let's take the, let's take the standpoint that Jared Leto is innocent, right? He didn't actually kill anyone. Yeah. I respect the hell out of this flex because what he does is he takes Oh yeah. Rami Malik out to the middle of nowhere in like fucking Lancaster. Um and just starts digging a hole in the desert and then after he's dug like a couple of feet, Leto goes like, "Oh no, I'm sorry. I was mistaken. It's over here." Yeah, yeah. And he keeps switching the spot. And he keeps switching the spot and like there's a time lapse so we don't really see until um the next morning when like denzel shows up uh rami's killed leto so like all right we gotta he's like all right bury him in one of those holes pick one um and i'll be back in a few hours he drives off to go like pack up 
Leto's apartment yeah. and shit. Um, we don't see how many holes he's dug until then, and it's like over a dozen. Right. Yes. So like, by the way, he kept having Rami Malek dig new holes. <laughs> yeah. Which is all right. If I was if I was being fucked with by cops and I wasn't creepy Jared Leto and was innocent mm-hmm. and like they I hadn't given them a reason, I might be angry enough to do this to them. You know? Yeah. It's because <laughs> that's what it is. He's he starts trolling them. Yeah. It's a he's trolling them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Lancaster. That's uh, I believe where Seven ended, right? That's the high, wa- the the fucking power lines. Maybe I'm. It's closer to Victorville, but oh, okay. It, it it's it's uh, maybe. I don't know. Um, but yeah. So Remy Malik is dug in a bunch of holes, and then Jared Leto starts fucking with him more. So he kills Jared Leto. Uh, and so at that point, like the tragedy I'm talking about is. The Remy Malek's uh, fucking guilt and how fucked up he is at the end of the movie about it. Yeah, uh, we're given the idea that, that hopefully like, hopefully Denzel sending him the barrette will right. give him closure. Yeah, but I just couldn't feel bad for him because his character was suddenly weird. Like they just his character suddenly became an idiot, and then it was like, yeah, you should probably go to jail. Uh, you followed Jared Leto into the desert for some reason. Yeah, dug I mean, a bunch of holes and then killed him. We he yeah, I mean you don't want him to go to jail, but like it's No, but I kind of stopped caring because of what he did was so dumb. Yeah. This is it also was like, you deserve this. This is, Again, it's not like 7 where it's like, well, cut off Gwyneth's head, so mm-hmm. Yeah, you're going to shoot like that's the whole point of 7 is the end where Brad Pitt's losing his mind because he's like I really want to kill this guy, but I realize that what he wants uh this just didn't give you that because it's like, yeah, you sort of fucked up here, man. Yeah. You did something really stupid. Yeah. Um, this is also where we find out what it is that Denzel did. And it's, yes. it's, he's, he was responding to a crime scene, you know, five years prior where there were two dead women tied up on rocks in a park. Uh, and he goes off uh, to just to clear the surrounding area and he gets surprised by another victim who has who has survived and escaped somehow she's got she's been stabbed a few times in the back it looks like but yeah she's fine but she surprises Denzel and he shoots her right in the heart <laughs> yeah. and that was that was kind of funny and silly to me well because it well, here's because it's the realization is like oh so you're both terrible cops uh you both really fucked up and it was just very funny that coincidentally they flash back to denzel having this moment of being like ah and shooting this lady in the heart and then you're as oh so i guess he did the exact same thing uh, uh no <laughs> not the exact same it's, thing it's pretty different to the point where i don't even they don't it's it's but it's, everybody covers it up everybody the whole thing is yeah everybody he covers killed it this up, woman yeah. he fucked up killed somebody and it gets covered up yeah and so it's just very funny to me that it's just like like i i just i want to this is i want when i said i want 20 movies of this i want 20 movies all starring denzel where they keep ending with them accidentally <sighs> killing someone and burying them in the desert mm-hmm like just every movie, they keep accidentally killing He's just somebody, burying, a, uh, making a body disappear in the California desert. Yeah, every episode, every movie ends like you watch the movie and you're like, who are they going to accidentally kill? Like sometimes it's no one of consequence. It's mm-hmm. like a guy at the car wash. Yeah, uh, but they have to. They have to accidentally kill one person. Sometimes it's like a it's like a big guest star like Tim Allen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, no, I, I mean, <sighs> it's because again, it's it's the way he so he gets surprised by her and shoots and like sure uh it's just it's one of those things that feels very rookie uh and uh it's again it's about cops getting startled and angry and and like shooting people uh accidentally and and i just feel very little sympathy for either of these cops sure for doing such incredibly dumb things uh and so that's what it was like i just didn't it didn't get earned uh at that point and so it just it, it ended up kind of silly yeah I'm, I'm gonna argue that denzel's situation is way 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 more understandable yeah um than riding with a guy out into the desert and then hitting him in the face with a shovel because he, yes. he made you mad 
Yeah. It, 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 uh, Denzel's situation is basically something spooked him. He was holding his gun. Yes. And he fired the gun. Um, he might not have even meant to shoot. He might have tensed up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. It's still like, I don't know. It still just was too much. Like it ended up being too much at this point is like, oh, you accidentally killed someone. That's funny. So did I. All right. Well, let me help him. Well, let me help you out. Uh, and so, yeah, the rest of the movie is just them burying Jared Leto in the desert and getting rid of his clothes, and covering it up. Yep. And then and it just and, like, and then Denzel mails Rami Malek a barrette that the jogger was wearing when she disappeared um, to make him think that he found it among Leto's yeah. belongings in his apartment so that he doesn't lose his wife and kids and have a heart attack the same way he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they, that that was a neat idea. Mm-hmm. Like I know why I know why they you know, I, I know why they're doing like the thing with poetry. Denzel's backstory. It rhymes, it's, Dave. It's like poetry. It's like poetry. Yeah. It just didn't quite work. <laughs> I again, like yeah, the endings, I mean, the ending of 7 is fucking over the top and operatic. Um Yeah. But like it's earned. But the ending like, of 7, yeah, it works. It's earned. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's I I do I still am, I'm going to I'm going to stand by the idea that if they had spent more time uh putting Rami Malek like uh on on the ragged edge, the ending would have landed better for more people. It, yeah, I probably would have been able to forgive it more. Yeah. That's the thing is when it came to Denzel's backstory, I had already like lost faith in the movie. So it just kept then it was just like I'm not in it anymore. It you know, it's the thing. It's I think Abe has talked about this every a, a lot of people have talked about this is the when a movie reminds you that you're watching a movie. And the Remy Malik thing, it took me out of the movie because it was just like that's weird. And suddenly I was watching a movie until that point I was like invested. Mm -hmm. And then when he did that, I was like, oh, he did that because the writer needed him to do it because it's a movie. Yeah. And they needed this twist ending and they didn't do it correctly. And so everything from then on was like, ah, I don't care. (laughs) Uh, I still enjoyed it because I love stupid thrillers, you know, you could have trying to catch a killer. Yeah. 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 No, I I was like, man, yeah, there's, I was just thinking about ways to make the ending better. (laughs) So I, uh but yeah no i still i i I, well, I I enjoyed this movie i liked having yeah a, a that, movie it's hard. a movie with with uh like a serious movie with big stars that i could just sit and watch like an adult yeah i mean i'm sure i'll watch this again i just i think i might have appreciated this better if it was just a stupid whodunit if it was just an alex cross film type of film you know what i mean mm-hmm. uh, uh you know where fucking Carrie Elway's gets shot through some milk. Hell uh, yeah. You know, I, 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 I don't know. It's just because they were trying to do something. Cause that's, that's basically again, why seven keeps popping up. Cause you think that's what seven is. You think it's like an Alex cross or a, or, or just a mystery thriller. And then you're like, Oh God, I didn't expect to feel fucked up mm-hmm. at the end of this. Yeah. And I feel like this is what's trying to do that. It just, didn't quite pull it off but again everybody's doing a great job it's well directed i know the director also wrote it right Mm -hmm. uh leto is killing it denzel's especially killing it remy malik is killing it everybody's killing it uh it's what you just said it's nice to just watch a movie an adult movie that's like all serious and like uh you know catch a serial killer but it's still silly yeah uh i guess so i did i didn't find it silly i i identify what you're i i recognize what you are saying and agree with it that yeah him the moment he gets into that car with jared leto it's just like okay what's what's happening yeah (laughs) it was really confusing um uh, and really silly this movie like i said it was it was written and directed by john lee hancock who also did like the founder a couple other movies blind side yeah yeah the blind side i forget what else um anyway uh he wrote it back in like 1993 and the first person attached to direct it was steven spielberg no shit yeah why would steven do this i don't know this is 1993 Uh, even in 1993 i feel like you'd look at this and go like wait no i'm steven spielberg uh i mean i would have loved to see this as a spielberg film but you know uh also i mean this next one makes a lot of sense clint eastwood 
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Warren Beatty. Warren Beatty. Was going to direct at one point. And I can see that. And even Danny DeVito at one point. Nice. Warren Beatty was going to turn into a Dick Tracy, where Dick Tracy fucking... You know, yeah, buries it's, it's all, Madonna in the, him, in the desert dra- or whatever. Him dragging uh, Big Boy Caprice's mutant, yeah. mutant ass out to the <laughs> desert. Um, I'll never get over the goblin makeup that Al, yeah. Al Pacino's like, put this on me! <laughs> I understand Clint Eastwood because that's that's what this movie is. It's a it's a gone baby gone. It's a mystic river. That's what it, I think it's trying to be, right? Mm-hmm. It's Where definitely it's going sort for of that, about, that tone. Well, Mist- it's about the search for justice turning you into a monster. Yes. Uh, uh, so, like, it's the idea of like you put you put a character in a position where you want them to succeed. You know, you don't want these these ladies to get killed. You want the serial killer to get caught, and then it makes you feel all shitty at the end, where you're like, "Wow, not only did they not catch him, but they killed this other person." Um, in the case of like Mystic River, it's more cut and dry that it's an innocent person. Uh, in this one, it's like, we don't know. And so I really appreciate what they're going for. I absolutely like the end result. I appreciate it. They just didn't get there. Yeah. They, again, they, they messed up with, with Rami's character. Yeah. They just didn't get me there. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's the only problem. Um, yeah. I don't really have much it's else like, to say about this movie. Yeah. It's fine though. I would I would say this is definitely worth free. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely worth uh, worth like if you're if you're on HBO Max. Yeah, if you if you're an HBO Maxer and uh you're an adult. Um, yeah, if you're an adult. And you want to you want to you want to sit and watch a a a a, a movie about acting. Uh, yeah, if you're like statistically speaking like a dude uh who enjoys like like the the fucking like shit like 90s thrillers um i say that again because these movies the more i watch them, the more i realize like just women have a bad time that like ma- majority of the actresses in this movie play dead people yeah we um, still we got one uh, of them, we got i mean there was another wire like the coroner is avon barksdale's sister right that's true uh, <laughs> that's true um that said, Denzel does a monologue to a dead person. He does. And like, uh, I, I don't know. I'd love to be a dead person that Denzel monologues to. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about how stressful that must be to be a dead person you that Denzel's monologue. You just have to not move. Yeah. And then you'd want nothing more to itch your nose, you know? Mm-hmm. Because I'd like Denzel's monologuing at me. Yeah. And, and then like, my fuck. face starts to itch. You're like, I'm not going to scratch my face. I'm not going to ruin I'm Denzel's not scene. I'm Denzel's monologue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's one of those. It's a, it's '90s thriller style, uh, you know, an Ashley Judd type of movie, uh, and it's quite it's quite enjoyable. It's real chill. Mm-hmm. I'd say this is a little less, um, maybe less chill. A little. Well, I was gonna say it's a little less like uh, pulpy is not the right word. It's not the same. Yeah, it's not it's less. It's not the same tone as an Ashley Judd thriller. And no, it won't end with like her confronting the killer yeah. on the boat and killing them, yeah. and then roll credits. It's less conclusive, but it's it's got that. Thr- it's just a it's just a it's a pretty good thriller. I don't know. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's all fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. Everything. It, it's yeah. It takes place in L.A. Sure does. Yeah, because why not? They were probably already there, you know. Oh yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, they're like, well, let's just shoot it here. We got all the stuff. We got like nine. Uh, we got like nine streets. That's enough for a movie. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, I got nothing more to say. I don't have anything else. Yeah, this has been great. Mm-hmm. We had a great time. We did. Hey, we, folks, we had a, we had a delightful time together. Yeah. Hey, folks, I want to tell you about our Patreon, patreoncom slash unemployed. We have exclusive podcasts there, like Tom and Jeff watch Batman and Fox Mulder is a maniac. Uh, for ten dollars a month, we watch movies with our patrons every Friday night. Uh, we have we have special custom episodes that we just watch that you can order from us custom podcasts i don't know just go there yeah. go on there we will talk about whatever you want for uh, enough money uh, for enough money we also have a store tpublic.com slash store slash game for the employee bring it t-shirts masks mugs stickers posters all kinds of things yeah check that out god damn you yeah and if you see jared leto you run yeah just don't get involved I mean, e- don't, even if don't look back, you just run. Even if you think he's a murderer and you're trying to be like a, a detective and solve a case, just don't, it's not worth it. 
Just run. It's not worth Just it. run away. Just opposite direction. Yeah. Get get away from that man. Mm-hmm. Walking around like Frankenstein. 